echo. Yeah, now it's there's an echo. Okay. Yeah. Brother Lenny, let me know when we're starting. Okay. Okay. I'm checking the live uh, thing and uh, so so that I can go. Yes, Didi, are we ready to go? I think we are pretty much on Facebook or live, and I think I uh, I could ask you to uh, lead the show and uh, begin the show. Over to you, Shiddhi. Yeah. Thank you, Prasanna, uh, for this uh, wonderful uh, event organized by you. And I'm really grateful to uh, host this today's program because today is a very uh, great day. And uh, we are holding this event on the occasion of International Day of Nonviolence, which was declared by the UN on the birthday of Mahatma Gandhi. So uh, first I'll thank uh, Brother Prasanna for holding the event and all the participants uh, for their honorable presence uh, by gracing the and uh, present by being present in the event. I'm really very feeling very happy to be with you today and to be uh, like listening to all of you, uh, uh, of you and uh, the, your verses, beautiful verses. And uh, now let me just speak few words on the occasion of non-violence because uh, being a Jain since my childhood, I have been taught that ahimsa parmodharam. Ahimsa parmodharam means non-violence is the supreme religion. And I'm really very proud to be born as an Indian. And India is a nation which has given us the most scientific and civilized paths of living in the form of Hinduism, Jainism, and Buddhism. And uh, Mahavira aptly taught about non-violence more than 2,000 years ago. And according to him, there is no quality of the soul more subtle than non-violence and no virtue of spirit greater than reverence for life. Now, ahimsa or non-violence is often defined or understood as uh, uh, absence of violence, but its implications are far wider. And it is more than doing the violence. It is more than an attitude. I feel it is a whole way of life. It is like we have to inculcate Volume. in us in every way. And the basics of nonviolence. Mm. The Volume basics Volume. of non nonviolence mean. Did you kindly turn on your mic? So I have to repeat again? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, actually, I had kept it uh, unmute, but I think, uh, okay. Again, I'll start. Uh, first, I'll thank Brother Prasanna for hosting the event. Uh, it's a wonderful event. And this event has been organized on the International Day of Nonviolence, which is declared by United Nations on the birthday of Mahatma Gandhi on 2nd October. And here, I'm really very happy to welcome all of you and your presence on this occasion as well as in this event. And uh, I would like to share a few words about non-violence uh, because being a Jain, uh, I have been taught since childhood that I have that uh, I have to follow the non-violence throughout my life. And ahimsa is par ahimsa parmodharam. I, that means ahimsa. Parmodharam means non-violence is the supreme religion. And really, I'm, I'm feeling very proud to be born as an Indian. And India is a nation which has given us the most scientific and civilized path of living since more than 2,000 years ago in the form of Hinduism, Jainism, and Buddhism. And according to Mahavir, more than 2,000 years ago, he has given us few uh, uh, teachings of non-violence non and he mentioned that there is no quality of soul more subtle than non-violence and no virtue spirit greater than and ahimsa or non-violence is often defined as the absence of violence but the implications are very far wider it is more than not doing violence it is more than an attitude 
non violence should be a whole way of life and for me ahimsa or basics of non violence means one should refrain from violence in any form whether it is physical emotional or verbal then only we can attain the goal or objective of having non violence across the globe now uh, i end up uh, on the non violence over here and now i'll uh, i would like to welcome our chief guest mr dr rupali sarkar gaur as well as mr arindam roy the distinguished chief guest for the event and uh, before i'll hand over to ms rupali sarkar and arindam arindam roy i would like to give introduction to these two, two distinguished chief guests for the event now i'll i would like to say few words about the, uh, dr rupali sarkar she is a poet travel writer social justice activist a former professor of english literature at delhi university and a creative writing professor at indira gandhi national open university and she is also widely published academic and creative writer and her book twice colonized women and Afri african literature is a seminal text on women's socio political em empowerment and in the year academic year 2020 and 2021 political uh, she also co-edited two poetry anthologies also now uh, being a very accomplished and qualified person i feel very honorable to meet her also and have her as a chief guest for the event and i would like to give introduction for our second chief guest mr arindam roy who also has experience of 40 years in various newsroom rooms and he has been a founder and editor or in chief and he was also a managing director of a reputed gurgaon based citizen journalist portal and he contributed nearly 13 chapters to various publications and among those seven chapters were also public, published in two copyable books published by times group and he also co-authored a novel rivers run back now i would uh, like to call dr rupali sarkar may i have the presence of rupali sarkar gaur will you please take the mic and uh, welcome our participants as well as say few words on your behalf uh, yes can you hear me yes yes i can hear can you, you hear me shilpa okay. yes yes thank sir. you so much uh, thank you so much shilpa for that wonderful uh, welcome and uh, thank you prasanna kumar for and the whole team for organizing this um, you know you make me feel uh, bigger than i really am but you know during this pandemic we've all come together and i think uh, in a very non violent uh, form we are all very you know we've come to know each other can you hear me hello hello can you hear me shilpa Yes, yes, we are hearing you, ma'am. Yes, I kept my mic mute. Okay, so I think that uh, you know I must thank you for this uh, wonderful invitation. Uh, I won't take a lot of time because there's so many poets, have so many things to read uh, to us. Um, I dedicate my few words this evening uh, to the apostle of peace and non-violence, Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, Einstein said of Mahatma Gandhi. generations to come shall scarce believe that such a one as this ever in flesh and blood walked upon this earth many countries and people in the world owe their freedom from colonial bondage to gandhi's non violent movement in india non violence as shilpa has just said in its simplest form and term is considered to be the absence of violence more uh, Non-violence aims to end injustice by making the perpetrator of injustice see reason and undo the wrong done by him. What is non-violence? Non-violence is an ideology that rejects the use of violent action in a conflict over power to attain social and political objectives. In our mind, the obvious image is of physical violence. I would like to add, as Shilpa did. verbal violence is also to be included as violence today the pandemic has closed us in and made us unsocial yet opened another world where we can communicate in this in this context 
Nonviolent communication is very important. It is about finding ways to communicate with one another that encourages mutual understanding, reduces defensiveness, and helps promote cooperative conflict resolution, a space where everyone's needs and feelings are taken into account. Talking about nonviolent communication isn't the same as engaging in it. There's a place for the former, including a place for pointing out to someone how they can be better at nonviolent communication. You might do it in a workshop about nonviolent communication strategy or in a blog post about them. But if someone in a heartfelt moment expresses their frustration and anger about something, and I respond by saying, you're a bad nonviolent communicator, then I'm talking about nonviolent communication while fa fa failing to actually practice it. On one level, tone policing sounds as if it's about offering helpful advice. Hey, you, if we say that, the way you are saying that isn't likely to encourage mutual understanding, may increase de uh, defensiveness, and may interfere with your goal of promoting cooperative conflict resolution. But even if that's true, when we actually seek to practice nonviolent communication, the focus is not on policing what other people say and how they say it. Rather, nonviolent communication is the effort to communicate in ways that move away from the language of judgment and accusation and towards the language of self-disclosure. And we must do this in terms of how we speak and in terms of how we, you know, how we manage each other. Nonviolent communication is about connecting with ourselves and others from the heart. It's about seeing the humanity in all of us. It's about recognizing our commonalities and differences and finding ways to make life wonderful for all of us. Peace Prize winner Jane Adams says that the things that make us alike are finer and stronger and many more than the things that make us different. The things that make us alike are finer and stronger and many more than the things that make us different. I thank Prasanna Kumar and his team for committing themselves to this belief and for inviting us all here this evening. So towards nonviolence, towards being together towards warmth and uh, you know and love and and the things that make us humane thank you so much thank you miss uh, rupali sarkar gauji and i'm really feeling so happy to hear your words and they were so means uh, you have presented the various dimensions of non violence uh, in your few words and you have summed it up in such a short uh, speech. You have given so many things. You have shown us non-violence and its dimensions at a, at a very wider way. Because I told in my uh, words that non-violence is just not one thing. It has a very wider applications which you have extended in your words very beautifully. And thank you for such a beautiful awareness about non-violence on uh, actually you, my words, you are a woman who really knows what it means no because yeah. today we have to extend this to animals also we have to yeah. extend it to nature we have to extend our non-violence yeah. to it everything means we thank should you not so much, so much even you know this, also. this forum has so much love thank you so much yeah yeah okay now i would uh, like to call mr arindam roy uh, our next chief, chief guest, uh, who has been a founder and editor in chief, uh, as well as managing editor of a reputed Gurgaon based citizen journalist portal. Brother uh, Mr. Arindam Roy is present or not for the. Yes, he is. He has joined. Okay. Can I have uh, Mr. Arindam Roy uh, on the mic, please? Mr. Arindam, Arindam Roy, please welcome to the group uh, and also. Uh, I'm feeling very uh, happy to call you as the chief guest for today's program. Mr. Arindam Roy, please uh, say a few words to our participants on today's occasion, as well as uh, please, uh, I want to hear something from you also. Sir, kindly turn on your mic, sir. Arindam Roy, sir. Yes. 
Sir, you are very much with us. Can you turn on your mic, sir? Arendam Roy, sir. Mr. Arindam Roy, can you hear me? I think we are not audible to him. Okay. You so I can. Uh, okay. You I hear? can call him you during the second you round. You muted him, Prasanna. Yeah. He says you muted him. No, no, no. I'm, uh, I'm just asking him to unmute. He says you have muted him. No, no. I see my. Sir, can you turn on your mic? No, hello. No, no they no. haven't. No, no they haven't. Okay, we could, uh, I could begin the okay. program. I think uh, okay. we could, we could, we could he's, go, he's going back and coming in again. Okay, okay. Okay, let him rejoin. I'll wait for him. Uh, Didi, I think you could uh, hand over this uh, mic to Satish Shah so that uh, I could call upon yeah. First okay, lap, I'll uh, call Mr. Arindam Roy in the second lap. And by that time, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Satish Srivastava and uh, let him grace uh, the event with his presence as well as take the charge for the first lap of the uh, event of International Day of Nonviolence today in our group Fertile Brains. Uh, Dr. Satish Srivastava, uh, please welcome and you can take the charge. Kindly turn on your mic, sir. Now is it? Yes. Audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Oh well. Well, friends, let me welcome all of you at the dais of Fertile Brain. It's a virtual meet. It's I think a fourth meeting we have, and. For this meeting, we have just listened Mr. Rupali Sarkar Gaur, and the meeting is for, and the, this is for the citation of the poem on uh, the topic we have taken, nonviolence. Nonviolence, such a thing, such a wider thing as uh, already narrated by our previous uh, guests. So I don't want to go in detail in that uh, slab. So I would like to, to call uh, Mr. Richard Spisak. No, from... sir, it, 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 it is, it is Shainas, Dr. Shainas, Shainas, Dr. Shainas. No, first number is Dr. Um, Mr. Richard Spisak, no, Florida. Is it present? Yeah. Yeah, but then uh, Dr. Uh, Shamana should be uh, reciting her poem since uh, she was Okay, so first uh, in, uh, start, uh, we can start with uh, Shainaz. Yes. From uh, Allahabad. Yes. Okay. Is she present there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, excuse me, my name is Dr. Shamanaz, not Shainaz. Okay, okay. Shamanaz. Yes, yes. Thanks, thanks, everyone, for correcting me. You can uh, go ahead, please. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm sorry, everyone. I actually I requested uh, uh, Prasanna Kumarji to uh, um, to let me recite in the beginning because I have not well, so I cannot sit for a long time. Next time I'll be present in the whole event. So a very happy non-violence day, non-violence day to all. Mahatma Gandhi is not limited to India, but he is for entire world. And uh, the, the thing is, it is very uh, depressing that nowadays his, he is being misjudged and misquoted and misinterpreted. So somewhat my poem is about that only. You cannot erase Gandhi. You cannot erase Gandhi from a mind and minds and heart because in him, lies the soul of India and the spark of modern India. Being an embodiment of non-violence and peace, he showed the world how to fight against the mighty power and all atrocities with the weapon of non-violence. He was for all, irrespective of caste, creed, race, and gender. 
but in the current scenario people are misjudging him trying to confine him to the certain ideology but remember he was for all for entire world community irrespective of right and left ideology thank you in my sickness i was able to <laughs> write such only short poem thank you everyone thank you for your patience thank you ma'am thank you thank Sadish. you thank you for reciting your poem as already since you are not feeling well so we have given you the opportunity now i think uh, mr richard spicek from florida usa is present yes thank you so okay thank you so very much it's a great honor to join you all on this wonderful day celebrating an international day of nonviolence and of course mahatma gandhi my poem a shining sunny day a cloudy sleepy afternoon a quiet velvet night the gun silent no longer spitting death no bomb will screaming tear each child will eat without fear no woman hurt no family's home destroyed no toy broken in the dirt feed our children not those bombs elevate the mother care for the infant child the father's pride put your generals away hide send your armies home on a quiet ride practice peace practice peace practice peace now thank you namaste thank you mr richard paisak now is the geeta mohanty is there yes i am looking at her she is present so miss geeta please come on guys and recite thank your poem you so please much. thank you so much for having me here it's a it's an honor to be here on this auspicious day um i would it's a i would like to thank um prasanna and uh, the the chief guest and all of you guys um Uh, for uh, making this occasion so graceful and beautiful uh, i wouldn't take much time um, today it's a pride day when un is uh, celebrating the international day of non violence uh, for mahatma gandhi's birthday also today is uh, sastri ji's birthday so with a quote of mahatma gandhi i would like to recite my poem uh, this is the quote of mahatma gandhi which is very very close to my heart we may never be strong enough to be entirely non violent in thought word and deed but we must keep non violence as our goal and make strong progress towards it being said that i would recite my poem non violence violation of humanitarian sense is violence violations of life's ethics principles values and grace is violence violations of the blessed human virtues because of ignorance is violence dominance and overpowering on weaker and innocent is violence tendency to rule by money power and muscle simply is an ignorance and a sign of violence a firm no and a bold step against violence without committing violence is non violence a lasting impression on an entire nation motivating and moving nation's motivation fighting against the mighty british rule without any weapon and that was mahatma gandhi's non violence and non cooperation brought us the independence created a history and paved the proud heritage of a peaceful nation the real hero the father of our nation and here we are today celebrating the birthday of that says who shook the world with his strong message 
through his nonviolence and strong determination, who said, truth and nonviolence is the basis of my religion, truth is my God, and nonviolence is the means of realizing him. What a profound emotion which moved the whole nation. Thank you so much. So proud of uh, being an Indian and so proud of taking birth in India. Jai Hind. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, and Satish, sir. Satish, sir. Hello? Okay, I would call upon Anna Ma Maria Manuela Rose San from San Argentina. Thank you very much to invite me to this uh, great meeting that today we uh, remember uh, Magandi. It's a great honor to me to participate. Uh, well, I wrote uh, three poems about today. Uh, the first one that I wrote, I call uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Tolerance is the pillar of trust on uh, respect with others, uh, their ideas and or uh, beliefs. Also, they could call it with their own. It's a very important value that must be instilled in people from one's own uh, childhood to be able to live in society. Love and wisdom, voices of the soul, they build relationships. Dancing with rims waving, the figure and spilling airs of tolerance. Culture is the fragrance invisible but uh, tangible in mind and in the thoughts that flow from the brain processes inside the human mind. Mahatma Gandhi's magic of tolerance always displaying a smile on his noble smart and uh, wise face and phrases puzzled uh, to the violence to the violent and uh, did not give rise to violence. Maganda Gandhi, example of tolerance and patience, knowing how to be considerate of the other. Happy International Day of Nonviolence in homage to the birth of the king of the nonviolence, Mahatma Gandhi, leader of India's independence and pioneer of nonviolence, inspiring of nonviolence. I don't know if you want that I read uh, another one. No, ma'am, uh, it is limited. So <laughs> thank you, thank oh, you okay. for Yeah. Thank okay, you. thank you very, very much. Uh, it's uh, very nice to me uh, to be with all of you. Thank you. I thank appreciate you, that. Thank you. Satish. Thank you. Uh, yes, audible to you? Yes, yes, yes. Sir. Okay. Now, Jill Sharon from USA. Is there Mr. Jill? Yes, good morning. It's oh. a great honor to be here. And I would like to acknowledge Mahatma Gandhi's birthday and also International Nonviolence Day. In the past couple of years, I have created friendship bonds that are of tremendous significance and have impacted my life. And these are with friends from India. And it is through those connections that I believe I have been brought to here today to celebrate with all of you International Nonviolence Day. My poem is called, Let Peace In. The quote that inspired it is from E.M. Forrester in the book, Howard's End. 
my idea has always been that if we could bring the mothers of various nations together, then there would be no more war. Let peace in. When your past is climbing fences just to pound upon your door at 3 a.m., forgive yourself. Look ahead. Let peace in. When those technicolor dreams douse your heart with hot splashed pain, show them your clean as morning face. Forgive yourself. Look ahead. Let peace in. When today is screaming, shooting, shouting, far too much for you to bear, forgive yourself, look ahead, let peace in. If it's killing you to peer into tomorrow at the sight of dead kids and their clinging ghosts, drown your pill caches in all of your houses, run, fast as the wind go now begin all is forgiven look ahead let peace in throw your doors open wide tear the blinds from your eyes look ahead look beyond and please 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 let peace in Thank very you. Very good. Very good. Nam Namaste. Very nicely recited poem by you, Jill. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now the turn comes for Xanthi Andro from Hill, Greece. Is there Mr. Xanthi Andro is present? Yes, yes, sir. Xanthi. Oh. Xanthi, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Hello. Please. Hello. Namaste. Thank namaste. You namaste. For having me here. Um, walking in the footsteps of uh, yes, of freedom and peace and nonviolence, I have dedicated one poem which is called "Ceasefire," the night when the bombs went down to Belgrade. So I will read this poem. Ceasefire. In the ceasefire, I'm using the time to take flowers and tears to the battlefield where the blood of my brothers is drowning the earth to heal the wound, the eternal wound of war. Let there be always ceasefires. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Santi. Thank you very much. Thank you, no, sir. sir. No, we could call upon uh, Baskar Jan. Well, Mr. Baskar Jha, please. Yes, sir. I'm here. Here only. Well, well, please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, happy Gandhi Jayanti to all of you, and uh, I extend my heartfelt thanks uh, to Brother Prasanna for organizing such a beautiful. Uh, meet in honor of in the memory of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, see, Mahatma Gandhi is not the name of a political leader or a national leader. Rather, he has become a huge school of thoughts and philosophy, propounding the theory of love and peace across the countries, across the world. So the events of Mahatma Gandhi holds true uh, in every corner of the world and uh, particularly in the difficult times the contemporary world is facing, the deep, the profound philosophy of Mahatma Gandhi is quite relevant and to imbibe the values of the philosophy, philosophical values of Mahatma Gandhi. So the, my poem, uh, the title of my poem is For the Father of Nation. So this is the, uh, the, the poem tries to capture the juxtaposition between the time, what it was when Mahatma was alive and what kind of uh, our countries 
at the right moment so there is a juxta juxtaposition you can visualize some pictures and understand the essence of the poem uh, the poem goes <clears throat> bapu thou wert so great in thoughts and politics indeed so simple and serene with a genie of countless noble deeds born on the land of innocence long enslaved cruelly ruled thou gave us the spiritual essence of love and peace as beads india had a free soul in the bodies of her loving countrymen thanks to thy patriotic cries for showering freedom seeds bapu nowadays a lot has changed ever since thou gone in thy absence and prolonged grief the country sobs and bleeds people now fear treading thy non violence and truth's path people now fear treading thy non violence and truth's path they resort any modus operandi catering to their needs the sacrosanct altar of sacrament and democracy no more the sacrosanct altar of sacrament and democracy no more greed of corruption and anarchy stumbles us in their weeds bapu thou were so great in thoughts and polit policies indeed so simple and serene with genith of countless noble deeds thank you very very much Oh Bapu, though you are great, really very nicely you have recited the poem, Vaskar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, Dr. Dina Pandeyachi, Durban from South Africa. Thank you very Dr. much Dina. for the honor of inviting me to speak at this uh, great commemoration of the birth of Gandhi and International Nonviolence Day. <laughs> Um, this is, um, my poem is called A Prayer for Peace. If I could turn the sand of the Sahara to sugarcane and give some of it to the senseless, that fewer people might want to wage war. If I could melt the ice of Siberia and help the earth to hum with life, and award some of it to every landless person on our beautiful planet. If I could make a little of the Kalahari green and gift it to the denizens, so tyrants might be less free with our enterprises. If I could make a little of the Atlantic land and give some of it to the greedy, so bombs will not dismember children and people will not be paralyzed. If I could transform a little of the Pacific Ocean into soil and bequeath it to the wealthy to fight in among themselves so they might stay away from other people's countries. If I could teach the people that they have enough land and they have no need to invade other people's lands. If I could teach soldiers that invading another person's country is criminal, that destroying families, homes, hospitals, schools, and people is criminal. If I could teach people to be satisfied with God's bounty and that they must not steal. If I could teach people that there is no happiness in another person's ha unhappiness or life in another's death. If I could teach people not to strangle our beautiful earth with their progeny and annihilate other species. If I could teach people that religion cannot mean hate, and that arrogance is merely a symptom of day and doom. If only, O oh Lord, if only. Thank you from South Africa. Beautifully recited, sir. Thank you. That's the end of Beautiful the poem. Recitation. Really. A poem is an impact of the society, and it's a really clearly elaborated by 
you, Mr. Dina. Thank you very much. Now the turn comes for Dr. Ranjan Saran Sinha from Nagpur. Is there Dr. Ranjan Saran Sinha? Yes. Yes. Hello, friends. Well, Ranjana. Ranjana, Ranjana Sharan Sinha from Nagpur. Okay. okay. Please. Happy Nonviolence Day to all of you. Thank Let you. nonviolence prevail this world. Oh, I am extremely thankful to Prasanna Brother for giving me invitation for this wonderful session. It's so pleasant and uh, nice to meet you all on this wonderful platform. I'm going to recite my poem on Mahatma Gandhi. And my poem is a tribute to the father of nation. The title of my poem is Gandhi. Incarnation of truth and non-violence. Incarnation of truth and non-violence. Lover of peace and patience. Frail but extremely agile. Honest, skinny and simple. Gandhi fought for freedom without pointing a gun. A heart full of love gentle like a dove, glory of labor he taught, hope to millions he brought, inspiring nonviolence, civil disobedience. He led India to independence, A spinning his chair cup, taking midday siesta, the father of nation with a great mission talk to countless individuals who had given up their lives. But on the ominous day, just before prayer, there was resounding booms everywhere. The country was plunged into sorrow, a big question mark for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ranjana, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, the time comes for Dr. Ramesh Chandra from Lucknow. Dr. Ramesh Chandra. Hello. Are you present? Yes. Are you listening to me? Uh, well, Dr. Chandra, please. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Mr. Prasanna Kumar for letting me in uh, in rather non-violent way because not hurting the order of the poets and I welcome all of you all the this is a galaxy of poets uh, around the world and I I, re I am really uh, see feel proud to be a part of it. My poem is International Day of Non-Violence. Non-violence is the key of good humans who dearly follow the dictates of God, who cherish the value of human life and believe in noble thoughts. The revered votaries of nonviolence practice this credo with missionary zeal. Buddha and Gandhi have taught the world how to inculcate within this angelic field. Treading on this path is difficult choice. One needs to shun all violent thoughts the hurt on body does not only count, scars on heart are hard to wash. Let everybody, every day of year, be violence free. Let every day of year be violence free and every moment of life be in full bloom. We can really enjoy this auspicious day by wiping this blot with mankind's bloom. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh. Thank you very much. Now, Dr. Sonia Batra from Amritsar. Sir, I'm afraid she's, uh, she could not be present here. So I will, I think we uh, could go ahead by uh, 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 asking uh, Angie oh, Stehan, yes. ma'am, to join. Angie Stehan. From yes. The... Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me for this very, very important event. 
Uh, Nonviolence is not just a technique against uh, violent governments, but it is a way of living as was said before. But I was asking myself, what is the opposite of violence? It's not nonviolence because nonviolence is much, much more. So I think the opposite is empathy. And empathy is a big gift. My poem starts with the first woman that was found in the African uh, place. We know that we all come from Africa and her name was Lucy. So empathy is a learning path. Lucy is dead. She fell from a 12 meter tree at the beginning of our history. And we straightened up, believing ourselves to be rational, spiritual beings with a special place between angels and animals. Yet our hearts are a noisy local market. The children have their hands full of sawn herbs. They crush spiders and ants. They chase each other with stones and sticks. And as strong men, they skip diplomatic procedures. The grammar of confrontation act before the opponent does and notify it with a tweet. Thank you very much. Thank you much. Thank you very much. Here. Oh. No, so, Dina, Dina, I, I think uh, we have. Uh, Dina's turn has been done, right? Yes, yes. Uh, we have Joanna Doa Devadayal. Okay, from Tirunala Valley. Yes. Uh, can we have Miss Johanna? Can you? Can we have Johanna? Yes. yes. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes. ma'am. You are. Okay. I'm very, very thankful to be among all of you tonight. Um, I feel privileged and I greet everyone on this International Day of Nonviolence. I'll proceed with my poem, A Word for Peace. From childhood, one is taught the sense of right and wrong. Morals, principles, values, standards, the list goes on and on. Where remains innocence, the clarity in the eyes of a child that knows not of creed or ethics with a heart undefiled. In non-judgmental attitude where sensitivity exceeds conscience. In mindfulness and love, sentience renders cognizance. If all our thoughts and actions spring forth from love's pure fountain, forgetting concept of good and evil, attaining universal peace is certain. Thank you. This was my. Thank you so much. Thank you for the chance. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Didi, uh, since yeah, we have... I'll, I'll proceed with the second lap now, brother. Yes. Uh, yes thank you, Dr. Satish Vasa, for holding the first lap wonderfully. And now I would like to call Ms. Jelda Castro to host the second lap of before, uh, today's event. Before that, before that, but before that, we could ask Aranda why Maharana would yeah, honor yeah, guest. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah. To uh, yeah. Before I call upon Ms. Jelda Castro, I would again like to introduce Mr. Arindam Roy, our second chief guest, who has a 40 years of experience in various newsrooms, and he has been a founder and editor in chief in okay. different uh, truths as well as uh, uh, he was a managing director of reputed Gurgaon based citizen journalist. Now I would like That's to call. Right. Yeah, one minute, Ms. Zelda. 
Uh, I would like to call Mr. Arindam Roy to ha speak two minutes on non-violence to all the participants, and then I will hand over to Ms. Jelda to continue with the second lab. Mr. Arindam Roy, can you please join us yeah, and honor the event? Yeah. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thanks to all of you to invite me on this occasion, the International Day of Nonviolence. Uh, I recall properly of a personal journey. The year was 1969 and I was a school boy. That was the centenary year of Mahatma Gandhi. And in a missionary school that I studied here in Allahabad, we had a month long program, but for three days, first, second and third October, we had a special program. So that was my first brush with Gandhi in a very serious way. We had uh, various kinds of exhibitions, essay writing, so on and so forth. But then Gandhi stayed with me as I moved from school to college, to university, to my first job. Interestingly, when I was in my uh, undergrad years, I had opted for modern history. And in modern history, the national movement, Gandhi's thoughts and beliefs, they were very much a part of our curriculum. When I took a job of a journalist, as a cup journalist, the year was 1981, the month was June. Interestingly, the person, the first person uh, under whose wings I was to get trained as a journalist was none other than his grandson, Mr. Rajmohan Gandhi. Of course, his other grandfather, his Nanaji, was Sri Rajagopalachari. So I, you know, that was a very, very, very interesting, very, very enriching moment for me and was actually getting to meet Raj Mohan Gandhi, whom we called Raj. And around the same time, the film Gandhi was released, Richard Burton's. So uh, Raj Mohan Gandhi took all of us, the entire staff, and two uh, cup journalists, it was Bindu, Shah, and me, we were made to sit on either side of our editor-in-chief, and we saw that film. It is a beautiful experience, which I still you know, recall. So this was my first brush with Gandhi. And later on, as I went on to become a journalist, as I saw life around me, I felt that yes, nonviolence is not a concept. It's not a mere theory. It's a way of life. You see, uh, now it is the, uh, the UN sort of decided to celebrate it as the International Day of Nonviolence. The decision was taken, the resolution passed was, was on 15 June 2007. Now, every year on his birthday, you see, uh, we have this day, which is commemorated not only in India, but all over the world. Uh, the resolution reaffirmed the universal relevance of the principle of nonviolence and the desire to secure a culture of peace, tolerance, understanding, and nonviolence. This is what I got from the UN's uh, website. Introducing the resolution in the General Assembly on behalf of 140 co sponsors, India's Minister of State for External Affairs, Mr. Anand Sharma, said that. The wide and diverse sponsorship of the resolution was a reflection of the universal reflection, uh, universal respect for Mahatma Gandhi and of the enduring relevance of his philosophy. Quoting the leader's own words, he had said, quote, nonviolence is the greatest force at the disposal of mankind. It is mightier than the mightiest weapon of destruction devised by the ingenuity of man." Unquote. Another quote which comes to my mind as a journalist and a person, I always remembered that Mahatma Gandhi always said that poverty is the worst form of violence because hunger and starvation is man-made. This got reaffirmed when Amartya Sen was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work on hunger. So we again find that Gandhi's you know, vision, his ability to see how man creates 
you know, man keeps man hungry so that the forces of production work, so that colonies, you know, he, when, when he was practicing, we were a part of a colony. And there were various colonial forces which were ruling them. So he understood that, you know, one country should not enslave others, should not loot others. And this is something which he has talked about, which he has, you know, said, which he lived in various ways. I think I would, this is what I have to say. Nonviolence is a way of life. He followed Gandhi, Mahavir, also Jesus Christ before him. And he reaffirmed. And then, you know, there were so many others who, who followed Gandhi internationally. So uh, whether it was Martin Luther King Jr., whether it was Aung San Suu Kyi, whether it was Nelson Mandela or Barack Obama, we found so many people again and again referring to Gandhi and reminding us the principle of nonviolence. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Arindam Roy, for uh, just uh, highlighting on the wonderful points of nonviolence as well as few incidents of your life which you felt personally about uh, Mr. Gandhi and his family being with them, as well as it was a wonderful experience you have uh, got in your life. And I can see all the things which have contributed to you also being a generalist, uh, the wide experience that you have shared with not only with us, but with other people also by publishing books and all. And uh, now I would uh, thank you for again, I thank you again for being here. And I would like to call upon Ms. Jenda Castro to start the second lap of the event. Ms. Jenda Castro, can you uh, take the mic, please? Okay. Hello, dear souls. Hi. It's a great pleasure to be among you again. Yeah, nice, in, nice. On this uh, relevant celebration day. And I would like to start calling Christine Hall from Nashville, United States, please. Christine, are you there? Ma'am, Christine, no, ma'am. No, ma no, ma we could call Anne Maria Stephen. No, okay. Can I call um, our dear Dr. Molly Joseph? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Please, dear as come in. Dr. Molly, please start your recite. Hello. I hope I'm audible Hello. enough. Am I? Hello. Welcome. Yes. So indeed, it is a great, great pleasure to be with all of you from different parts of the world, different time zones. Today, October 2nd, the very day we pay tribute in a very soulful way to the father of our nation, who taught us the great success mantra for any person, for any country, for any race, whatever, nonviolence. And when I look at nonviolence, I feel nonviolence is nothing but spreading love and kindness and tolerance and giving a wide birth to each other, which unfortunately enough, the world is lacking these days. If only we could go that way. The philosophy sedimented in our DNA, the Indian by our great Bapu, father of the nation. Here comes my poem on it. It highlights in the first part the, the urgent need of the day for that kind of a thought so that we can build a world any. Where cicada sing in mud. The exploding sound of a distant short rubber berets. I shudder. Where is my legitimate share of peace, nonviolence? To live a life without fear, to pray, to watch a movie, or just to go on with my own pace of living, 
when the world is torn between divided ends and money power, material power dominates between nations, religions, races, when people run roughshod over each other, when a blind cult can put to risk the calm flow of life and pounds upon the innocents, when wanton destruction becomes the order of the day, where is the average man's legitimate share of peace, nonviolence? What good with all our progress, conquering space and time, soaring heights of technical skill with gadgets and fingertips? Isn't it retrogression when essential values are lost and we do not care for each other but breed hate? Life pulsates in fear of a blast, a flood, a rebellion, a cake. We live in uncertain times when nature even retaliates. Unless we awaken, holding hands together, practicing nonviolence to build a world anew, where love fills up hearts to overflow with kindness and care for all, and our valleys turn green with cicadas singing in my Thank you, dears, for your patient listening. Wow, it was so sad. Thank you very much, dear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I would like to call Rinzin from Bhutan. Please come in. Rinzin, hello, oh, dear poet. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jel. Jel, thank you, uh, Prashana, and uh, everybody at uh, Patel Friends for having me. Love and greetings from high up in the Himalayas, <laughs> Bhutan. Uh, I am especially honored to be celebrating uh, this very important International Day of Nonviolence, that's Ahimsa, with uh, such uh, imminent bars from all over the world. And I'm especially honored to be cele celebrating this day, you know, with, with my brothers and sisters from India, from where Ahimsa, you know, was propagated by Lord Buddha 2,500 years ago. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I especially did this poem for this occasion, and the title is Elixirs for Universal Peace. Oh, the wisest of all living beings. Use not your intellect and wisdom to harm either oneself or any other being, but to share love and friendship warm. Draw not your sword or your guns, not even raise your hand or your voice against one's own or another being out of mundane greed, hatred, or ignorance. The law of karma none does escape, cause and effect doth our lives shape. Suffering and woes doth none desire. Joy and happiness are every being's right. <clears throat> Be not judgmental, but listen. Listen to your conscience pure. Love, compassion, and mutual respect are the elixirs prime for mankind to cultivate and sustain universal peace. I hope Ahimsa becomes a universal dharma and may love, peace, and happiness prevail on Mother Earth. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Very, very great lines. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. And now I would like to call Vina Bombardieri from Toronto, Canada, please. Hello, everyone. Hello, dear and, Vina. Yes. You Can you hear me? Okay. Welcome. Yes, yes. I would like to begin by thanking Kumar for inviting me in. And uh, my greetings to all of you out there. And the, po the, the name of my poem is called Let Peace Reign. Let peace reign in your heart by sunny days 
or gray. Put down your weapons and connect with your neighbor. For we are all family, so therefore let us act like one. No one is above the other in this humanistic universal world. Let us walk side by side and ease each other's fear. Since violence is not the answer, love is. Let us pray for our world leaders that they may put their priorities in proper perspective and do the right thing. Like our great leaders of old, to name a few, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Marley Maguire, and Mandela. May we all be ushered to a higher ground, away from guns, viruses, terrorism, and chemical warfare. May we learn to treat one another with total acceptance, regardless of race, gender, or creed. Whatever happens to the least of us happens to all of us, for we are bound together in this web we call life. A quote by Chief Seattle. To conclude, may Mother Nature grace us with many more years of plenitude and gentle rebirth. Namaste to all, your mystic rose, yours in love and light. Thank you for listening. Be well, keep the peace, and most of all, stay strong. Thank you so thank you. much, Diavina, for your thoughtful lines. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. And now, I would like to, to call um, Tegit M. Fayad from Cairo, Egypt. Are you there, dear? Tajit M. Fayad. No, ma'am, we can proceed with uh, next one. He's absent? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So, please, Mr. Richard Temple by United Kingdom, please come in. Thank you very much. It is. Um, firstly, You're thank welcome. you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for inviting me to read here. Um, I just wanted to start with a quote from Gandhi, uh, which has informed my whole life, which is, if we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. We need not wait to see what others do. This is called pacifism in microcosm. As your boot connects, I reflect on all the ways you name me coward. As dark blood drips from ruptured lips, I recall the times you called me weak. As you grind my flesh to a graveled mess, the crowd sneers at perceived fear. As you laugh at my destruction, I see only my reflection. You don't see the courage spent to take the beating. You don't see the strength it takes to stay my hand. You don't dare to face your fears, control your rage. You don't dare to see yourself and understand. At every wound that you inflict, my sympathy expands. At every falling blow, I know who controls what we call now. With every fading hope of glory, you're a bit part in my story. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so very much, dear Richard, for your brilliant recital. Thank you. And now I would like to call my dearest, poetess and friend, Eva Petropolion Liano. Please, dearest. Eva? Is she absent, Toma? No, no, she hasn't joined. You could call. Calls another member in the row. No? Yeah. Okay, so I would like to call um, Nahid Ak Akta from Hyderabad. Please, madam. I'm afraid she's not here. I think we could go proceed with next one, next name. Okay, okay, so Let's call the dearest and talented poet, 
Mircea Danduta from Romania. Please, poet. He joined the awarded, yeah. Is he there? No, 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 no. He joined the awarded. No, 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 no. So okay, and I call Christine Iguina from France. I, my friend. Also absent. Also absent. Okay, so uh, I would like to thank you all you that have presented you on this lab and would like to meet you again on the next opportunity, okay? A big, big hug to all you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Del, uh, Delta. Uh, for your love and also hugs and blessings to you and a very happy weekend to you. You are and very for welcome. Wonderful, uh, for your, that you have uh, taken up the second lap very wonderfully and fantastically. Now I would like to call Miss Maria Elvira. Miss Maria Elvira to join in and take the mic and be a host for the, uh, be an anchor for the third lap. Ms. Maria Elvira, can I have you on the mic? Maria Elvira. Brother, Ms. Maria has Good evening. Am I audible? Hi, Ms. Maria. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Take the charge of third lap. You can uh, present yourself. Taking the charge. Oh. Okay, I'd like to thank Prasanna for the invite and the opportunity to be with you all. I'm going to call um, my, my fellow poets to recite uh, their poem. The first one is Lucky Easy from California. Are you there, Lucky? No, ma'am, no. He has not no? no. Oh, maybe next time. Okay. Um, and the next one is Anna Maria Stepin from Poland. Hi, Anna. Are you there? Please join me. We are waiting for you. No, no. She left there. Oh. Uh, and the next, uh, Santos Kumar Pocahel from Nepal. Please join me. Hello, dear. Are you there? Sir, turn on your mic. Turn on. Namaste, no? everybody. And a warm greetings from cool, cool Kathmandu, Nepal. I had Hello. an opportunity to be in Aurangabad to celebrate the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi two years back. And uh, of course, uh, to my very pleasure, I see some of the poets from Odisha, the spiritual land, in, and I thank to uh, Prashanna Kumar, who has been in connection with me for more than a year. So I'm very much obliged and very happy to see you all. And today for this event, I have written a very small, very short poem. I would like to recite it. Please allow me. The title of my poem is violence. Children were playing here and there in the street, all covered with dust. She was smiling in the eyes of all of them and was preparing and was peeping from far peace. While people were on their own, more in daylight 
rather more in the dark of the nights, the dreams of innocent children were dying. Children were playing here and there in the street, all covered with the dust. She was smiling in the eyes of all of them and was peeping from far peace. While people were on their own, more in daylights, rather more in the dark of the nights, the dream of innocent children were dying. The next day, the next day some girls who were crying was moving away from their mother's eyes, peace being caused. And peace was crying, beating her breast as innocent children were murdered that day and that very night. That day and that very night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you ever so much, Santos, for your presentation. A beautiful poem. Thanks. And the next one, Mick Misa from Melbourne. Please Thank join you. in. Thank you, Maria, Prasanna, and Fertile Brains, and all involved for the invitation to this event. Here it goes. A century of peace and world love, a dream. I grew up in a village near the olive grove and vineyard. Now it's a front and backyard. Don't speak Italian, a Latin dialect trying to translate. The shamans awaken the knowledge and pass it on to the villagers. And when you see the void cut, the space fabric, and watch the light seeping, enlightened, the burglar strolls. The burglar took Starry Night from the museum, a well-lit news reports they've caught. Holding in the city, someone stole my stars. The wizard gifted. The magic is lost. And in the nightscape is glowing. Stratified clouds, the void hides. Later overcast, a break in cumulus. I can't see the Southern Cross. Inside the house smells. It needs to be cleaned. It's 1 a.m. <laughs> At 2 a.m., hatchlings call. Abruptly stops. 3 a.m., bird calls. France weighs its predators. The yeast, well lit, street lights reflect off clouds. The dawn, sound and light merge. Harmony. The village, distant, upbringing. Time traveling tour guide, poets are peacefully storytelling again. Thank you ever so much. A big kiss, Thank you. sir. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> and and uh, the next one is someone that I have uh, had already the opportunity to meet before and write something together. My dear friend, Tony T. Young from USA. Please join in. Hello, Tony. Can you hear me? Yes, you are audible, dear. Okay. Nice to meet you again. Nice to meet Please you, honey. Please recite your poem. Okay. Um, my poem is called Consequence of War. Too many casualties and no one ever wins. Sorry. Too many casualties and no one ever wins. Forsaken, too many, a warrior, a child, our next of kin. What's so important that we feel we need to gain for the crushing blows of reality is that life goes on the same. So let us pave ways towards peace and keep love in our hearts with hope and prayers for a brand new start. Blessings to all. Nice to meet everybody. And thank you for having me here. Blessings to you too, dear. Uh, thank, thank you, you ever so much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Didi. 
Thank you, Prasanna, for inviting me. Blessings. Um, and now I would like to call Dr. Ming Kishin Mohan from Maryland. Maryland. Uh, please forgive me if is not here. No, yes, I'm here. here. <laughs> oh, excuse me for the wrong spelling. Okay. Coming. Hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you to Mr. Pras Mr. Prasanna Kumar for inviting me here and greetings to both the chief guests and all the eminent writers and poets. I'm honored to be here. Um, I wrote a poem as a tribute to Mahatma Gandhi and the title of my poem is May the Melody of Love and Peace Capture the World. May the Melody of Love and Peace Capture the World. The world stood still, stunned with pain. Three shots on that calamitous day. A nonviolent fighter against the violence. Bapu, the father of the nation, a saint, was no more. This is a small statured, half-naked fakir, a giant among men who travels the road of ahimsa, equality, peace, and truth, stood tall like a banyan tree, taking the world under the shade of his canopy. His principles relive through many, Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Dalai Lama. Gandhi, a messiah of humanity, we need you. Our earth is in chains. Manacles of pandemic and endemic scourges threaten our world. Racial injustice, crime, violence, greed, poverty, religious and political crisis made holes in the fabric of our lives. Let your charkha knit a virtual tapestry of harmony. May the melody of love and peace capture the world. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you ever so much for the beautiful presentation. Thank Happy you. to be with you. Thank, Thank you. Nice to meet you. And, and the next one, I would like to call Sorina Ivan from Germany. Please join in. Are you there, Sorina? No, ma'am. No, no. No? Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one, Olina Vienges So Bad from Philippines. No, ma'am. No? It may be next time. Uh, you could call Anna and. Anna Maria, Maria. is there? Yeah. Anna yeah. Maria is Stephen from Poland. Yes, yes, yes. Are you there, Anna Maria? Hi, Gia. Would you like to join in? Anna Maria, ma'am, can you turn on your mic? She's not. She's yes. here with us. She's not with us? Yes, yeah, she is with us. Ma'am, can you recite your poem? Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my poem is Like Mad Monsters. In a world so wonderful, among creatures so amazing, why a human endeavors to prove we are the worst? Anger and hatred, killing and, and all types of evil. Why are many of us fixed so much on that? money and power that's what drives us crazy like crazy we are if we choose violence over love like mad monsters who enjoy the suffering they cause but i'm still a dreamer i dream of the day love will finally prevail thank you thank you ever so much beautiful presentation to you um inviting me well Honor. Bye. Thank Bye. you ever so much. I must leave. <laughs> so goodbye. <laughs> <to all. laughs> A big kiss. A big kiss. Bye.
Thank you. Welcome. And now I think I can call uh, Zen Jones from Colorado, USA. Are you there, John? Zen? Hello, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, you Hello. are audible. I bring you greetings from Colorado. My poem is No More Violence. And thank you very much for having me. I'm honored to be here with all of the distinguished poets. No more the honor violence. is ours. The honor is ours, dear. Thank you so much. Our noble giants demonstrated long ago how peace can bring about change. Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr. We must never forget their names. Imagine if they were alive today, would they feel their lives were in vain? If they saw the reckless attachment to weapons, I expect it would trigger great pain. So let's make love our next pandemic, allow love to virally infect our minds. Paint love brightly on all the weapons so that peace can restore humankind. Place ourselves in our neighbor's shoes. Reject hatred and greed at all times. If God's image appeared at the end of a scope, surely that would eliminate violent crimes. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. Beautiful indeed, dear. A kiss on your heart. Thank you. Well, uh, may I go on with uh, the next one? And the next one is Medi Villapendo from Philippines. Are you there? Welcome, sir. Are you ready? Oh, no. <laughs> Hi, Hakesh. Hello, Maddie. do you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can, hear, I can hear you perfectly, dear. Okay. So this is my point. Namaste first. I can see you. <laughs> I don't know which, okay, I will try to, did you see me? Oh my God, hello? I, I think something is wrong. Yes. With, uh... We can hear you, but can't see you. Just switch on the camera. So now you see me now, I'm here. I, I, I switched the camera you already. On the video, video, video. On the on the screen you have uh, below the screen icons are there. That video icon is there. Press on that. That might be crossed. Press yes. on that so you can be visible to all of us. Yes. You are okay. audible, but you are, you are not visible. Okay. I think I can. Uh, we can hear uh, her phone. You no, can speak can as, you can you can can't recite. We, you can yeah. uh, can't we hear her? I think no yeah, problem. Yeah, uh, yeah, no maybe we can then. I nag ano nga ako ng Hindi naman dyan yung saan? Ano na ko? Hello, we could your poem, ma'am. We could reset your poem, yeah. Okay, I'm <laughs> finally I have seen my face. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'm not, I am not well versed about. <laughs> it's okay, madam. No problem. I am not, I am not good at uh, with the technology. War. We all know that the Gulf War is a very bad thing that happens to the world. And everyone, every nation joined in this. And so I, I was feeling so bad. That's why I write this. No, 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 please, no. No, don't worry about. We in want memory to of you. the Gulf War. 
the whole world has waited for that final hour. Peace had run out of time. It was even too late to say, Allahu Akbar, the world has gone mad. 30 nations against one, men. humanity against war. It is legal to fight a war sanctioned by men, by nations whose mouthpiece was peace, but peace was only on paper. Peace was only on paper, blotted by men craving for power and glory, for greed over a piece of land, for oil, which the whole world stands for. Saddam is my brother, Bush was Uncle Sam. Which side do I, do I choose and why? Will it shorten the war when I take one side? But no, I do not care for these gentlemen. I don't care who they were, who they are, or who they will become. I care only for the humanity, for the whole world, for the unborn child waiting to be told that the whole world is one, but they will never know because their mothers are casualties of war. My heart grieved at the sight of freshly dug graves, of people dying of hunger and thirst, of women being raped, of a beautiful landscape reduced to a mound of dirt, of a house that crumbled to the ground of the war itself, and the clever men who made it, of the people rejoicing on the night of Operation Desert Storm. Ah, the world is, the wounds of fate is easy to create but they scarce remain bleeding unto death. For time alone would not erase the memory of those events unequaled in history. How they rejoice watching it on TV in full coverage. And I regretted being sorry about the Chinaman Square Massacre. That night I died a thousand times, wishing the world to end, wishing they have forgotten Hitler and his crime. The world used to remember him vividly and they even surpassed the crime Hitler had committed against mankind. But true enough, an eye for an eye will make the world go blind. And this is according to Mahatma Gandhi. I try to console myself that I am not the only one asking these questions to themselves. Who invented war? I am sure not God. Who created man? In my yes. heart, I believe it's my own. Then why be at war and then kill a man? A man is a father of a child. Like you and me, like them, who's in the heart is peace and wanting to be free. Why don't we live without war? Why do we allow others to start? Why do we have to join and soon forget and soon regret the losses we incur? Why don't we stop the war before it is too late? Why don't we stop humanity advancing to its grave? Namaste. Thank you, Paul. Namaste. Thank you ever so much, dear. Beautiful presentation. Um, I think uh, I have uh, to finish now. Yeah, thank you, Maria, and for wonderfully anchoring the lab as well as. Uh, Thank you for your presence and uh, gracing the event. Now, uh, I would uh, like to call Ms. Sunita Hussain to conduct the fourth lab anchoring. Ms. Sunita Hussain, can you take the charge? Sure. Uh, thanks a lot, Shilpa ji. And uh, Maria Elvira, Jelda, and uh, uh, Dr. Satish Sharma, sir. Uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Satish Shirvastav, sir. Thanks. Greetings to everyone, uh, the people from different time zones. This is uh, really a privilege and pleasure. And uh, re my regards and uh, gratefulness goes to Prasanna for organizing all these events, poetic events, uh, especially online where we all can get connected. International Day of Nonviolence, International Day of Peace, such a day and uh, a reminder to everyone, the need of the hour, the need of the time, when uh, the turbulent time is there, and still there are many who are indulging in different kinds of violent things. 
before wasting time i would like to carry forward the baton with the fourth lap and uh, before i start i would like to recite a few words i have written on this day international day of non violence or peace day a reminder to all to be peaceful in every condition a plea a prayer a wish on this day to every nation to every person have peace in words and actions thoughts needs to be caring words and revengeful actions also bigger form of violence violence breeds self sabotage it's like inflicting violence to your own body and soul be be compassionate and thoughtful live and let live in every day with these words i would like to start with the fourth lap before i start off and uh, calling out the name let me congratulate every poet on this platform for expressing in beautiful verses their thought their emotions relate to this day truly as uh, a comment has come amazing array of poet definitely so first of all i would like to invite don krieger of pennsylvania usa to express himself on the topic international day of non violence don krieger from usa do do we have him here yes yes i'm here and okay. here sunita thanks sir thanks for being here thank you sunita and thank you prasanna and everyone who's here i i some of you i know pankuri sinha and some several others and I, i'm just proud to be reading in this company our shared humanity nothing is deadlier dogma so beautiful courage riskier faith seductive privilege more noble and just war more profane indifference crueler god no greater truth kindness nor greater lie color nothing more human discovery thank you sir thank you thank you thank you don kreger uh, for the beautiful poem uh, really a powerful one now i would like to call upon miss bharati hazarika from assam miss bharati hazarika from assam yes. you are welcome on this platform to express yourself on this talk thank you namaskar namaste and good evening uh, it is a great pleasure to be here with you all dear poetic souls and thank you dear brother prasanna uh, happy gandhi jayanti and happy non violence day uh, i just wrote this poem on non violence here the title of the poem is peace is the soul concern peace is the soul concern non violence is the true weapon to keep peace is the soul concern no violence no war live in happiness with each other this is the ideal of gandhi ji to restore the humanity non violence does not mean only war non violence to animals as far 
keep nonviolence and love as your ideal, then our dream of peaceful world will be in real. Thank you. Beautiful, be really beautiful. Thank you, uh, Ms. Bharti Hazarika ji, for being here. It was really a privilege and pleasure to listen to you. Now we have Ms. Suchi Patra from Pune amongst us to present her work. Ms. Hello? Suchi Patra. Yeah, am I Hello, audible? Am I yes, audible? Ma'am. Yes, ma'am, you are very much audible. Please go oh. ahead. Okay. A very good morning and good evening to all distinguished guests gathered today, this auspicious day. Thank you, Prasanna Kumar, chief guests and team of Fertile Brains for inviting me to this wonderful virtual meet. I am a very proud Indian and namaste to all. Today, we celebrate the birthday of the epitome of non-violence, our most revered father of nation, India, and also he belongs to the whole world, Mahatma Gandhi, affectionately called Bapuji and the great leader Lal Bahadur Shastri too. Wish you all a happy International Non-Violence Day. Best wishes and God bless to all my dear friends here. So coming to my poem, the title is Non-Violence, a Divine Virtue. We were created for spreading joy, love and compassion. Non-violence is required in thought, word, and deed to really live in peace and harmony. As very exemplified by Mahatma Gandhi, today, violence of various forms are proliferating in today's world. Why? What for do we wage wars? For racial hatred? For acquiring patches of land? For supremacy? for political power over our own brothers and sisters? Let's stop this inhuman bloodshed, racial discrimination, status discrimination, discrimination against girl child, abuse of women, suppressing them, objectifying them, domestic violence that destroys relationships among couples, family members. For what cause? So much desire to dominate, possess, and capture, even at the cost of breaking ties of love? Why so much ego? Hatred in our minds? First, non-violence should be observed in every mind, and every conscience should be followed by each human being. The inner voice of the soul should not be allowed to drown in the cauldron and chaos of ostentatious, cruel, and brutal humans. So when each one of us rises in the eyes of our creator, trying to change and compete with our own selves, this world will be a much, much better place, full of non-violence, peace, compassion, and brotherhood. Thank you so much. Beautiful, Ms. Suchi Patra Ali. Beautiful. Uh, the essence, let's put an end to every violence, desire to dominate, breaking ties of love. Really beautiful thought and essence. Thank you. Truly. Now uh, we are moving ahead with uh, Ms. Suchishmita Ghoshal from Kolkata. Let's welcome Ms. Suchishmita Ghoshal from Kolkata. A very good evening to all the esteemed poets, authors, and artists from many corners of the world who are present in this global platform on the occasion of International Nonviolence Day and showering their brilliant poems of love, peace, fraternity to place the poetic meeting. My warm greetings from India, and here is my poem dedicated on the theme of pious Gandhi Jayanti and Ahimsa. There resides peace. If humanity is not mutilated, there resides peace. 
if thoughts are not scrapped, there resides peace. If smiles are still beguiling and free, there resides peace. If faces are not worried, there resides peace. If love is not misguided, there resides peace. If bonds are not contaminated, there resides peace. If connections are not crispy and full of cracks, there resides peace. If nations don't forget brotherhood, there resides peace. If we have not forgot kindness for every creature, there resides peace. If we do what we preach, there resides peace. If togetherness is still the strength, there resides peace. If discrimination is prohibited to enter the borders, there resides peace. If prosperity brings harmony, not the fidelity, there resides peace. If we believe in the divinity of God, not in the treachery of evils, there resides peace. Thank you very much. Uh, for the awesome platform and my sincere thanks and infinite gratitude goes to our dearest poet Prasanna Kumar sir for inviting me to participate with my poem on the theme of Ahimsa. Thank you very much. Namaste. Uh, beautifully penned Such, uh, Suchishmita. Really beautiful uh, pen. Thank you so uh, young, much. Young, young, pro young prodigy amongst all youngest, I should say youngest poetess among all. And it was really a pleasure to listen to you and have amongst us. Thanks a lot. Thank you God. very much, ma'am. I'm God. so humbled. Now I would like to invite David Leo Siorosis from Edmondson, Canada. Thank you so much. Uh, my no, poem is called my poem is called The Blue Pearl, Nila Bindu. Cher Bleu, when December died, I woke in the blank dark of 5.55 a.m. and peacefulness pulsed in all the halls of my blood. Poetry poured out of the eyes and the palms of my hand, blissful tears of indigo ink. For a moment, all my eyes were open, those in the soles of my feet, the eye of the heart, eternal witness, and the thousand petaled eye in the crown of the head. Three times before I broke night's fast, amidst the refrains of my morning chant, a vision of the blue pearl of pure consciousness flash of light that flooded my head with wonder. My other father, teacher's teacher, taught this world is nothing but a school of love. Thank you so beautiful. much. Beautiful. This world is nothing but beautiful. Beautiful place, really, of love. We want to make it a beautiful place, full of love. Such a nice thought. May everyone should have it, those who are creating or making war. Thank you, Mr. David. It was really a pleasure to have you here. Now I would like to call upon the next poet in the slam, mm -hmm. Mr. Bhaskar Jha from Pune to express Mr. Dan Dutta, can I have, uh, can we have your attention and uh, we want you to recite your poem over here. Mm -hmm. Miss Mr. Dan Dada, 
Uh, I think uh, yeah, uh, there is some issue. They have uh, muted themselves, thankfully. Exactly. Okay, uh, let's uh, move forward. And I would like to call upon uh, Miss Levin Robinson from New York. Miss Levin Robinson from New York. Prasanna, can you please share? No, 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 no. No, okay. Mm -hmm. Shall I call upon the next one? Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Mr. Tom Edwards from uh, Bulgaria. Mr. Tom Edwards Philip from Sofia, Bulgaria. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Sunita. Yes. And, and thank you, Prasanna. You're for, welcome, uh, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much for um, inviting me again. It's, it's wonderful um, and, and gives me great hope to hear all of you poets from uh, all of us poets from around the world. And, and, and the other thing I just thought of, which does give me a bit of hope, is that I now I'm I was born in England, uh, but I now live in Bulgaria. Uh, and for 25 years of my life, Bulgaria was the enemy uh, because it was behind the Iron Curtain. And I now live here. Um, so, <laughs> you know, there is hope, I suppose. Um, uh, the title of my poem doesn't necessarily suggest uh, peace, but I, as I hope. Uh, you'll understand uh, it's a little it's kind of based on a real life thing that happened to me when I was a teenager and it's called um, Men Fishing at Sawtell uh, which is a small place was a small place on the coast of Australia um, and hopefully you'll see how it connects with the theme as I read it. <clears throat> Men Fishing at Sawtell up to my knees in it the estuary smooths to a sheen no action here the trees hold their ground, our lines lie flat, unmoved across the water, not a bite. Beers flick open, yanked from the case. The afternoon solid and jests fall flat, not so much as skimming the surface like a stone. Peace by any other name. Insistent traffic keeps its distance. Destruction is elsewhere, at least for the moment, dead calm. Then his ratcheting reel scratches silence and a plume of galahs explode above the skyline. Something rustles in the bushes behind. It's enough to recall we're not so far from airstrikes, incursion patrols and rage masquerading as duty. And as before, it's not to be our choice to leave alone lies we might just let live. On the estuary, shame was making its pact with grief when another sudden movement there with no more than a flick, it clipped the back of my leg and was gone, a ripple of muscle shimmering on. And then Cole's voice, loud from the creek, a snake, geez, we should have caught and killed it. But the water was already healing and I was pleased. It had meant no harm. That creature with no interest in constructions made in our name, economies of threat, our impulsive intrusions. And the snake was the one who let us be to stand knee deep in its element, relearning our place on the planet. Thank you very much. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, it's in a very subtle manner it is giving what is the idea of non-violence. We are really privileged and uh, we, uh, we really happy to have you here, Mr. Tom Edward Philip from Bulgaria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was indeed a pleasure. Now I, uh, I would like to carry forward uh, this lap by calling upon Ms. Muhi, uh, Muhsin Arda from Turkey. Mr. Muhsin Arda from Turkey. Hello, everybody. 
Hello. Hello from Turkey, and I'm privileged to be with you on this Nonviolence Day and remembering Mahatma Gandhi. What a great man he was. And it is very interesting that two men in the history are named as the father of the nation. The first one was our uh, leader, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. He was named in 1984 as the father of the nation and then Mahatma Gandhi. Both of the men uh, had to fight in a way with imperialist powers and bring uh, bring freedom and peace to their countries. So God bless their souls. And I would like to say uh, one saying from the Turk that peace at home, peace abroad. So how nice that we can be all together in a peaceful world. And if not the soldiers, if not the uh, political leaders can achieve it, I suppose the poets and poetess of the world, maybe we can contribute to the peace and uh, compassion, understanding each other. So my poem is called Compassion. The kings are stealing, folks are submitting, NGOs are mushrooming, asking for help more and more. My heart is bleeding. Pimps are everywhere. Sex slavery is flourishing, either a capture of a war or with the desire of a glamour, slams daughters lured, tortured, exploited, crying for help. My heart is bleeding. Genetically modified organisms distributed universally. Earth is suffering. Illnesses are increasing. Everybody is watching first, then asking for help. My heart is bleeding. Indigenous people and capitalist collaborators are deforesting the rainforests, causing unprecedented disasters and global warming. Environmentalists are in panic, warning and asking help. My heart is bleeding. Civil wars are erupting, bombs and bullets, while manufacturers are getting rich, are killing people, forcing immigration. United Nation is looking for salvation, for peace, peace by peace, but no universal collaboration. My heart is bleeding. I light a candle and say to myself, I am compassionate, but I have compassion fatigue. Thank you very much and peace on you, peace on our leaders who were really uh, looking for and calling for peace in the world. Thank you very much, Prasanna Kumar. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks a lot, uh, Ms. Mohsin Ada from Turkey. Beautifully, you have expressed the feelings of every poet that my heart is bleeding. Truly, we poets are so soulful, passionate, compassionate, and we get so grieved when we see violence. Politicians and um, war mongers, they are actually creating it. And uh, may your poet, uh, may your prayer be heard May everyone's prayer be heard by that Almighty and please be restored. We wish on this way. We wish on this way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, in this lab, the last poet, I would, uh, last but not least, I would like to call upon Miss Isaac Cohen from Israel. Can I have your attention, please? Isaac Cohen from Israel. 
<coughs> yes. Mr. Isaac Cohen from Namaste. Kittai. Sorry for the inconvenience. Namaste. Sir. Namaste. 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 Very Namaste greeting. to all my friends in the India and the in the world. Thank you for the uh, Kumar Kumar Parenta for the uh, invite. Uh, my point. Ode to Mahatma Gandhi of blessed memory. Okay. Isaac Cohen. Non violence is a power. Don't with your grace throw my hand. No flutter like in evil opposite my faith. Do not cross the road to the wicked. Uh, accept my word for it and don't break my foot. I resist without power, uh, only with my wind. Take my words and give me freedom. Thank you, as a coin, Israel, and uh, Congress to all my friends in uh, uh, the India and the, uh, in the world. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, Mr. Isaac Cohen uh, from Israel. It was really a uh, privilege and a pleasure to listen to your wonderful words. Whatever we write, we are only having one wish, a prayer that the peace may prevail. The peace may prevail. Now, uh, ending the fourth lap with uh, the last poet in the category. Now, I hand over the necklace of pearls of very bright colors back to Miss Shilpa A to carry forward the event. Thank you, Sunita. Uh, you have really wonderfully uh, anchored the fourth lap, and it, it's Thank really you. very nice to hear your melodious voice as well as words of wisdom. Thank you. And uh, I really feel happy to hear every word from you. And really, I'll appreciate Same here. That. Same here. Thank you. I appreciate your view that peace must prevail. Yes, yes. peace must prevail in the world. And now uh, I'll call upon uh, J Ms. Jeshri T. Rao uh, to conduct and anchor the fifth uh, lap. Uh, whether she did she join? Ms. Jeshri. Yes, 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 Shilpa. Thank Hello, you, Shilpa. Yeah. Hello, Hello. You can now take in the charge and continue with the fifth lap. Yes, thank you. Uh, good, e good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, happy International Nonviolence Day to one and all. Good evening. Uh, good evening. As, uh, as one poet said, uh, the opposite of uh, violence is uh, not non-violence, but empathy. I do agree with that. And my poem, the title is Empathy. Reading my poem now. Huh? I'm audible, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. In the silence of night, mercilessly they killed. Children pleaded, none were saved. Wars, many have been fought. Victory is not worth of the bloodshed inhuman to violently disrupt peaceful life rise O oh man rise world needs more men who care with love and peace war is the solution of the weak mighty says stay strong to non-violence and truth thank you continuing with the last lap of today's session I now call upon Kanupriya to continue with her poem. 
Okay, we could move on. Did you could you could call upon yeah. Nahid Akhtar, ma'am? Nahid Akhtar, ma'am. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. So my poem on non-violence is, I wrote on Mahatma Gandhi. He is the epitome of non-violence. So through uh, my poem on Mahatma Gandhi, I want to say about non-violence. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma nice to meet everyone here sorry i could not uh, come on time my son is not well so please excuse me for that so i'm going to read my poem the title is i recall paul gandhi primarily a man of god a humanist inhabits humanity wears drinks and sinks in it. A revolutionary sympathizes autonomy beyond common praise. Opposes not yet, not yet. Immeasurable for his grand, grandeur, greatness. More perhaps intimately his national children with a person's doubt intervened his veins fibers, muscles, heart, and blood, an exemplary, enmeshes with heart trillions, comforts, griefs of millions, shapes anger and violence, beats out sins, poisonous, evaluates imperial world. I call recall Gandhi. When I say recall Gandhi, it, uh, I mean to say that I'm recalling Mahatma Gandhi. When I say call Gandhi, I hope someone like Gandhi comes uh, comes in this uh, time of uh, uh, this, all this kind of uh, poisonous atmosphere uh, around us. When I say recall Gandhi, I recall Mahatma Gandhi. When I say call Gandhi, I mean to say I'm expecting someone to behave, to be like Mahatma Gandhi. I recall call Gandhi. Gifted independent breaths need to be independent yet. I recall Paul Gandhi everywhere and nowhere. Oppression, suppression, murders, rapes, hunger, violence, domestic, national. Need him, need him. I call, recall Gandhi. The Mahatma, the great soul, the face of serenity, humanity. Thank you so much. That's a that was a beautiful right, ma'am. Thank you. Thank Calling you. upon Kanu Priya now to take over the no, this is session. Mirza, Mirza, Mirza sit and beg. Okay. Hi, everyone. Happy International Nonviolence Day, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Prasanna and Pen Wonders International for creating such a great carnival of poets. And I am just going to recite my poem. And the title of the poem is A Pledge to Nonviolence. A Pledge to Nonviolence. Come and commemorate Nonviolence Day. Lark is rapturous with plumage, glossy and gay. Blossoms are restless to scent and be in fray. Sun is flagrant, star falls, breeze sinks to stay. The next stanza is non-violence supples sentimental force to win a battle. 
नॉन वायलेंस सपल्स सेंटीपेटल फोर्स टू विन अ बैटल ए सेंटिफ्यूगल फोर्स टू मेक बारबेरिजम्स बोन्स रेटिल अ फिलोसफी दैट कैन इनलाइटन इवन अ फ्रेंजीड कैटल विद इट्स ब्रिक्स विद इट्स ब्रिक्स एंड पीस वर्ल्ड विल टर्न अ हेवन हैबिटेबल द नेक्स्ट सेंसर इज O apostle and advocate of truth and non-violence, to swim ocean of thorns with sheer nonchalance, mollified aching hearts with melody of benevolence, tool the force is pierced a god to call you Mahatma in a sense. The next stanza is your tenet of non-violence served the world a light pole. You changed history of revolution with ideology to roll. You shone in the sky like moon with rays of harmony to dole. Your sacrifice sets to wipe out menace from this world a goal. The last stanza: You changed the definition of victory with thy philosophy. You exalted world the power of sacrifice with impunity. You practiced peace and turned uprising a serene symphony. You cuddled oppressed with dalliance of equity and dignity. Thank you and thank you very much. thank you that was uh, another nice one okay now i call upon kanupriya are you there great thank you so much what a beautiful evening of poetry on non violence it has been a treat to listen to all of the great poets and my poem is called 1857 a poem but it uh, kind of begins with the uh, image of 1942 the time when gandhi started the quit india movement you know asking the indian soldiers to not fight in the second world war but it doesn't mention it this is the backdrop of it so i hope you like Thank you. 1857, a poem. Though it was the year of 1942 that got immortalized in public memory, due to a movie of the same name with the added adjective of a love story, and there were many love stories in the Raj, Nehru, and Edwina were just one of them. And yes, they might top the list. but an entire generation of anglo indians came into being with oh, this isn't a love poem or one about the legitimacy of love or about illegitimate love concerns both love and hate perhaps hate more and ways of curbing it conquering it for the colonial raj did one good thing with its ideology of inherent superiority and economic exploitation it first united the warring nation states then the bickering religions giving birth to a third ultimately bringing them all together in opposition also drawing some permanent political lines facilitating the creation of a nation the year was 1947 but 1857 before that the year of the rebellion when the crown came in we all know the story right i'm a historian or a historian on a break doesn't matter what matters is that the twin nations need a reinvention a remodeling a renaissance a reformation risorgimento a reincarnation nothing less than a revolution the arab nations have done it for better or for worse spilling blood from gaddafi's libya to osama's arabia some descended in war even when they were not syria 
and whether our twin brother, the difficult neighbor needs it or not. We the secular, we the liberal, we the tolerant, we the cognizant, we the cosmopolitan, we the diverse, we the daring, we the respecting need it to come together again, to rebond not just in the face of threats and usurpation by the forever plotting others, but against being used by petty politics, dividing religions, humans, families. Can we, the people, not stand up, not rise up, not march, rebel, protest against the colonizing force, impulse, power of electoral politics, half drugging, half sedating people with pranks, freebies, false promises, provoking speeches and words, silencing them with threats, beatings, killings, wrongful arrests, disappearances, mayhem. This might be 2021, and on some days the darkness feels medieval, but I'm sure we can ask for more light. We can even make some and make it green and cool and peaceful, can't we? And we also do remember the year 1942 as a year in between the Second World War when Gandhi called for the Quit India Movement asking Indians to not fight in the wars of others over control of colonies, we do remember, right? Then why do we not act upon it as well in these post-colonial times of new vested interests? Thank you. Thank you, Pankuri Pankuri Sina, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. That was a nice one of 1857 uh, related. Dr. Molly Joseph from Kerala, are you there? Desi, it was the war of independence, revolt of 1857. Sorry? Yeah. Revolt of 1857, war, first war of independence of India. Right, right. First war of India. Right, right, right. Thank you. Did he could call Can upon Sir Ch Chandra Lekha, Sir Chandra Lekha. Yes, sir, Chandraleka. Yes. Not there? Yeah, 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 I'm here. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma yeah, yeah. <clears throat> My poem on nonviolence is Birds taken shell, shivering on three branches. Plants too mourning the death of innocence silently. Blood stained river crying and flowing. As skilled man triggered the weapons randomly. Young and old lost all hope. Is there any end to revenge and killing? Where are the evil minds heading? For life and property, no security. Only solution to all burning problem is to follow the path of non-violence shown by the saintly soul in a line flow, the great Mahatma Gandhi. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. That was a nice one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your beautiful words. Thank you. Yakshay K from Bhavnagar. Are you there? No, Didi, no, no. No? No, no. Bhagwati Bandari from Bhu, uh, Bhutan. No, I'm afraid not, my Didi. Not there? No. Ashtindar I now call upon James Tian from China. James Tian. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, my dear Mr. Brother Prasanna, first for your kind invitation again. And happy to be with you all here again with this meaningful event. Same blessings as Europe. And the peace and violence is the global topics, indeed. Just the truth, the poem I wrote that day call for the love and peace. Hope you will like it and can get the impression from it. Thank you, and now I will read 
plant, plant the seed and yield the peace. Happiness is so simple this way. Praying for the inward affection, which is what we always dream, will light the peep of our heartbeat. Plant the peace of sunshine, then open our hearts for this planet. All the original sins are actually equally and country desires are the bogies. Please, my friends, plant a little kindness, just a soul without toes, keep up unique liberty. Hold it tight, our sincerity, feeling the sudden change of ourselves. Burning like a piece of cake, life is but a dream, be endless and also brief. Thank you very much. Thank you, James Pian. That was another nice write. I now call upon Mildred Parr from Philippines. Mr. Mildred Parr. Ma Didi, Didi, you could call Eddie, 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 Eddie for <laughs> Eddie for okay. Eddie, Eddie from Florida. Washington, D.C. I'm here. Yes. Ma'am, just wait for you a while. Yes. I'm Mildred Parr. It, Shall I continue? Ma'am, just wait for a while. Meanwhile, you could uh, take up the mic. Okay. Eddie. Okay. Eddie. Okay. Edward Foreman. Yes, fantastic brother from another mother that we need to one another. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Ed Poe. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for giving me cheer and thank you for being not over there, but over here. All right, my name is Ed Poe. That's how totally I feel fantastic. Please give me a time for you to join my rhyme so you all feel sublime. Okay, here's my potastic chime. This is called, um, Can We Not Fight? Can we not fight? We do it every day. What's the delight? Being a bloody decay. To test your might, then be a ray, a ray of bright light. Don't fight, just say. No guns or fist fights, no more noisy days. Rays burns bright, only dead bodies lay. Fights won't give heights, it's a murderous spray. Again, do you want to fight? To be strong like clay. It's never a great sight, being a thuggish castaway. Don't grip your fist tight. It's serious, not child's play. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wish you all a great, wonderful night, and I hope your tomorrows will give you so many potastic frights. Now, Jay Sri Didi. Jay Sri Didi. Where I was, what I was doing. Okay. It is not nice to say. Jay Sri Didi, you could call upon Monkey. Yeah, Mildred Parr from Philippines. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Is it my turn? Yes, your turn. Okay, good evening to everyone. I'm so excited to be here and I'm so happy seeing all your faces and all your poems. And I can see some friends. So I'm so, so happy, really happy. Uh, I hope I can give justice to the time given to me. Uh, and al I also want uh, to glorify Gandhi for the nonviolence. So here's my poem. I hope, <laughs> I hope to give justice to the time. Anyway, I have a dream to see the world a better place where harmony reigns and we living in peace. Leaders and countries being in harmony which Gandhi has begun with his non-violence philosophy. I dream of equality into each and every aspect, color, race, gender, religion, and culture with due respect. Honor in every human and dignity in people's, for people's lives. Ideal vision to free men from their bondage and survive. Gandhi had a vision, peace for all nation, a unified community bound by the deepest harmony where no heart aches, but love as a weapon to nonviolence. Peace, his vision 
to earn human dignity. I know I am a very little voice. I know I do not even have control on world's revolution. But being a writer, I guess I have a right to contribute and speak out, draw the nation towards peace, away from strife. Uh, that was just my simple poem. I hope you liked it. Thank you very much for the opportunity again. Uh, you're all my friends. Some of you have been my friends. So I'm really so excited to be here. Thank you very much for the time. And uh, Dr. Prasanna Kumar, thank you very much. And for the rest, thank you very much. That's just it. Thank you. Thank you for your beautiful uh, words. Thank you. I, I now hand over the, the lap uh, to Shilpa to continue. Okay, thank you, Jayashree. Thank you. Thank you, Jayashree, mm -hmm. for beautifully conducting and anchoring the fifth lap. Now, I would like to first thank all the participants who were present and who has recited their verses and poems beautifully on the Me. International Day of Nonviolence. Yes, Prasanna, there are some left. Yes, yes, Didi. You have four, four uh, poets left, and uh, I would uh, uh, take the pleasure of inviting them, if you uh, would okay. permit me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I would <laughs> like to call Prasanna to take the charge of the last round to call uh, the remaining uh, participants, and uh, let's again enjoy uh, the uh, last lap of the event. Uh, Thank you, you can Thank you, Didi. I would now I would call upon Manju Yadav, ma'am, from Spain. Manju Yadav, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir. Hello. Good evening, sir. A uh, very good evening to everyone present here. And uh, I was really listening, and that's very uh, emotional to listen all the things, and especially when you are not in the country and listening all these things about uh, being so global, a uh, relevance of Gandhiji. And my poem is uh, on Gandhi itself, his relevance in today's time, and how important he has become with the advance of time, with the, with the passage of time, moving more forward to the global citizenship and uh, global village uh, concepts. So uh, just I have given the name uh, to my poem as Gandhi. Gandhi, you won't die ever. You never did. Gandhi, you won't die ever, you never did. You became more alive with the passing time, with the sleeping values, with the dying spirits. Gandhi, you never die, you never did. Gandhi, you are needed more than ever. Gandhi, you are needed more than ever for the peace of humanity, for the brotherhood among religions, for prosperity of the cultures. Gandhi, you are needed more than ever. Gandhi, we are looking for you to learn, to live, the, live with love, to relearn the human bonds, to embrace the paths of love, brotherhood, and nonviolence. Gandhi, we are looking for you. Gandhi, we won't die ever. You never did, you never will. Gandhi, you live among us. Wherever I go, I see. Wherever I go, I see. Your footprints are printed on the culture civilizations. Your visions are aspired by all the nations. Gandhi, you are a definition of democracy. You are a resolution of equal relations. You are the solution of entangled global visions. Gandhi, you won't die ever. You never did, you never will. Gandhi, you live among us. Gandhi, thank you very much. Amazing, amazing. Wow, what a way of presentation. That's wonderful, ma'am. Manju Yadav, thanks for addressing the occasion. Now I will call upon Prasanna, but sir. Uh, from 
So I am Prashanna Bhatta from Barampur, Odisha. Sweet evening, present here. Thanks, honorable chief guests, hosts, and anchors. I am audible. Mr. Sir, Prashant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. In this colorful evening of this pious and auspicious day, I am fancy reciting poem about non-violence. The theme is, the title is, so to say, the title is My Win, My Weapon. Before reciting poem, I would like to clarify the theme of this poem. The theme sir, of this could, poem... Sir, you could directly recite your poem now, Directly recite Okay. Dear Lord and dear one, by birth I am an Indian, born as an Indian, in breed, in blood, in culture, in civilization. Proudly, I declare I am an Indian. How can I forget India's weapon? Near and dear ones, with these weapons, India achieved independence. No bombs, no missiles, but only truth and peace, non-cooperation and non-violence. Oh, my dear friends, peace specifies specification. Truth, peace, tolerance, non-cooperation, nurture, non-violence, non-violence, the supreme religion, rules, compassion. Oh dear world, no need of violence or invasion, no need of violent way of operation, need only mighty mind of social protection to be in peaceful perfection where no violence will resist or assist. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, promise today to live a life of non-violence. Promise today, make the world a heaven, the safest place where non-violence will go on. Where non-violence will go on. No act of aggression, no act of violence, only non-violence, own non-violence, only non-violence. Thanks all. Very well much. Beautiful, sir. Good. Powerfully presented you all. And uh, now I would call upon Kali Buddha Gosh. Kali Buddha Gosh. Kali Buddha Gosh. Sir, are you there? Yeah, I mean. Okay, Binod, you could, you could say a few words. Binod. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. First of all, I like to tell you happy Gandhi Jayanti. And uh, I want to pray to God that this Corona and World War will be ended on this world. And uh, my title of my poem is Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi, ahead, brought, yes, Mahatma Gandhi brought peace in the country. He was very gentleman. He brings non-violence in the country. He tells, if you got slapped in your one cheek, then you give your next cheek. If anybody hates you, then loves him, care him. One day his anger, anger will be reduced. So be patient and honest. He wrote many books. He gives motivation of patience and peace to the people. He was God-like figure. He did not live for himself, but he lived for the society. He gets troubles and obstacles in his life. He was a good man. His contributions are so many. He is a patriotic person. He is the hero. He is the pillar of the India. He focused peace is necessary. 
he has so much powerful words from his words all the wars can be stopped he is mahatma gandhi our all mahatma gandhi thank you wonderful dear be not wonderful uh, richard sir are you ready to go richard i mean uh, mishya dandata mishya sir okay then i, I would like to give a hand over this mic to ashilpa didi didi thank you brother prasanna and uh, i am really thankful to you also for being a wonderful organizer and arranging everything in proper order and inviting all the guests and taking so many efforts to make this event a successful event so i thank you as well as all my teammates dr satish srivastav uh ms zelda castro ms maria elvira ms sunita hussain and ms jayshree t rao i thank all my team members for the their coordination and the team work and before i end this i would again end up about uh, this meet and event with the words of mahavir uh, about non violence that one who neglects or disregards the existence of earth water fire air and vegetation and all other lives disre- disregards his own existence which is entwined with them here the summing up of this is we have to coordinate and cooperate and we have to protect and conserve our environment by non violence if we go on cutting the trees killing the animals one day we will ourselves not exist so this is the essence of the last quote which i quoted right now and with this i end up this program and thank you all the poets for their wonderful poems and recitations from across the group and happy weekend and uh, a very good day and good evening good morning to all the ones uh, the i really appreciate i'm looking forward for another such in- event within a month again okay thank you again and i say goodbye to all of you bye 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 thank you, you again thank you Thank you. Namaste. Bye bye and thank, thank, you, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone. Thank you. It was everyone. wonderful meeting bye. everyone. Thank you Prasanna. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank, thank, you, thank you team. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Your rest of brother thank Prasanna. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. Thank you very much. Good night from Australia. It's one o'clock the next day. Oh my God. Love from around the world. Thank you Dr. Sati. Happy to be with you all always. Medi. Mm-hmm. Rock and bye international bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.